Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputin and, and the PinePhone PostMarket OS Community Edition smartphone. So this is a version that ships with PostMarket OS pre-installed, but it's a phone that's designed to run a variety of different Linux-based operating systems. And as of the time that I'm shooting this video, I think it supports something like 17 different operating systems. Now there's still kind of a work in progress. And even though this shipped with PostMarket OS, there are still some things that are a little bit tricky. So for instance, it only has a couple of preloaded applications, including the Firefox web browser, a software center, calculator, and a terminal emulator. Um, but the software center isn't really designed to be any sort of app store, at least not as of uh, October, early October 2020. It's really designed so that you can use it to update the different packages that come pre-installed on the device, as well as maybe some of the things that you install later. So you can see a list of installed applications and you can manage them from here. But if you were, say, looking for additional applications, you're not going to find much in here. Instead, like a lot of Linux distributions, it's designed so that you can pretty easily install updates using a terminal. So I've got a USB uh, dongle attached here so I can use a mouse and keyboard. You could also use the on-screen keyboard to do some of what I'm about to show you, or you could even SSH into the phone so you can access it from a remote device. But for now, I'm just going to show you that this is running PostMarket OS, which is a uh, variant of Alpine Linux. And to, in order to install applications, you would use the apk command. So in this case, I'm going to say sudo, uh, so that it knows that I want to have root access, apk add megapixels, which is the name of a work in progress camera application, because there's actually no working camera application on the device uh, as it shipped to me from Pine64. Uh, hit enter and it'll ask me for my password. I'll just enter that. It's the same password that I used to unlock the device from the lock screen. And after a moment, it should download and install the Megapixels application. And then we'll have a camera, camera application. Now this is an early version of Megapixels. It's already uh, made a lot of progress. So what I'm about to show you is not indicative of uh, what it's capable of. So you can see that we have a fairly slow refresh rate here. And it's kind of dark compared to you know what my hand actually looks like. But it's a camera application, and I can shoot a picture of my hand. The developer of this application has already made a lot of progress uh, since this version. And so there's support for autofocus in recent builds. There's support for adjusting uh, color and other things. And so I'm looking forward to checking that out in the future. But the version that just sort of installs from the repository really quickly is this version, which still, you know, a little bit buggy. So you can see here, um, if you look closely, you can see that it's actually showing um, a very dark, very green version when I switch cameras to the front camera of what I can see. In fact, it was so dark that the you saw my reflection in the screen more than you saw that. So megapixels, work in progress, shows promise. Um, that's how you install it. If I wanted to uninstall it, I would say sudo apk del for delete megapixels, and it'll sort of reverse that process. It'll just delete the files that it had installed, and now the app has disappeared. So let's do that again. Let's um, sudo apk install pcmanfm. So I want to install a file manager. First, I need to actually type the command properly, apk add pcmanfm. And now we should have a file manager. It's not really designed for uh, smartphone devices, but it's a fairly lightweight uh, file browser that um, I think works reasonably well. Um, I do have a hard time opening folders, and there might be something that I'm missing here. But since I happen to have a keyboard, I'm just going to double tap and then say, let's take a look at that picture. And it points out yet another thing that's missing, which is that there is literally no image viewing application. So let's go get one of those. Uh, you'll notice that every time I bring up a text field here, it brings up the on-screen keyboard, even if I don't need it. I can make it appear or disappear this way. sudo apk install eog. It's not install. It should be sudo apk add eog. I'm mixing my operating systems. And now. Uh, I can see that I've got a picture here. That's not actually the one I want, though. So let's say CD pictures, CD pictures. So here's where those images were. But let's go back to the file manager. And I'll show you that you can do this two different ways. I can 
Now click on the image and it should open using the image viewer. Or I can go back to the terminal window and I can say EOG image 2020. One oh five one seven five. Yep. And so you know the geekiest possible way to uh, to view an image on your phone. Uh, I can switch between applications using Alt Tab. It's basically it's a phone that feels like a computer because it really kind of is here. Um, Control C to close out of that, and then I can you know close different applications this way. So that's just sort of a basic look at how you would install uh, and run different applications. Um, show you one other thing, I guess, which is how to take a screenshot. So now I uh, believe if I go back here. Yep, we've got a new picture just sort of in the main menu there. But what if I wanted to take a picture of a different screen? Let's say sleep five and and grim. And that gives me five seconds to, I don't know, change what's on the screen. Took a picture. Now we go back to the file manager. And let's open that picture. And now we've got an image of what was on the screen just a moment ago. So that's just a couple of basic commands that I figured out how to do after uh, spending a couple of days with this phone. Still learning my way around it, but uh, overall, it's a pretty uh, interesting device to play with. And it's really meant for, I think, enthusiasts and early adopters and people who get a kick out of the idea that you install applications on a smartphone, uh, desktop applications even on a smartphone, using a terminal window or SSH as opposed to using a software center. But it does show promise that in the future, uh, you might be able to use uh, more sort of touch-optimized, phone-only, touchscreen-only uh, software. And, uh, you know, is it, a, is it a true competitor, a true alternative to you know, even a cheap Android phone right now, eh, depends on what it is that you're trying to do. If you want to take a lot of great pictures and you want a really speedy device, maybe not. But if you're looking for something that's really pretty geeky, um, I think it's kind of fun to play with. So uh, this is Brad Linder with linuxsmartphones.com and lilliputing.com. And check out those websites for more details and stay tuned for more.